So in the last video, we saw that the data in a MySQL database, for example, is being persisted in a volume. It's just that that volume was automatically generated. We didn't really see it or feel it until we did an inspection. In this video, we're going to see how to give volumes names so that we can take control of those volumes. And all that means is when you start your first container from the image, we know that it has a volume. We know that by looking at the Docker file and the volume is var lib mysql. At the command line, we will tell Docker that whatever volume it creates, and we know now that some directory somewhere on the host system, we're going to give that volume a name. In the demonstration, I'm going to go for the label my data. And the point of doing that is that when we stop the container and remove the container, and then at some point in the future, we start a new container from that image, we can remount the volume using the same label, which will mean it will pick up the same directory that we created before. So I hope that's quite straightforward. Let's try this in a demonstration. And I think just to keep things as clear as possible, let's start from scratch. Docker container ls tells me that I've currently got one container running. I'm going to stop that container and I'm going to do a docker container prune to remove that stop container. And I'm going to do a docker volume prune as well so that we really do have a docker volume ls will confirm we have a clean sheet of paper to work from. But I'm going to recall the previous command where we ran the container. So here it is, docker container run, couple of environment variables, all very straightforward. We know that this image defines a volume at forward slash var, forward slash lib, forward slash mysql. We know that from the docker file. So to associate that with a label, we use the dash v command line option. You have to remember the structure, which is the label that we want to give to this volume, my data, followed by a colon, followed by the path of the volume inside the container. And once again, I'm simply working from the Docker file here. We know there's a volume declared at forward slash var lib mysql. That's what I'm going to reflect in here, var lib mysql. So quite a small change. And once again, I've forgotten to put the dash d argument in to run this in the background. I don't really want to see these logs, but as usual, I can do a control C and while that's starting up, docker container ls confirms the container has started up just fine. But the big difference now is if I do a docker volume ls, we've got rid now of that horrible random auto-generated name, which is very useful. By the way, we can also inspect this volume. We've done an inspection of a container, but we can also do a docker volume inspect, followed by the name. And I'm not sure how useful this data is particularly, but once again, it does confirm that this is mounting that volume on the host file system under this path here. And again, if you're on a Linux system, you can go and have a look at that data if you're interested. But what this means now is if I put some data into this container, when I destroy the container, if I start it up again, I can use the same volume again. So let's run through that. I'll exec onto this container. And my container ID begins 139. And I can run a bash shell in it. And we can do mysql p password. And we're going to use the Fleetman database. And just as before, I'll create a table. Let's give it a different name this time. I'm going to call the table does this persist with a single column called dummy, which will be a varchar255. Anything you like in there really doesn't matter. And then we can exit from MySQL and exit from the container. And now for the point of this, I can stop that container 
and remove it. So in the past, we used to think that the data inside that container was destroyed. You know now it isn't. It's safely in the volume called my data. And now when we recall the command to restart that container, I won't change anything in here because this dash V is now going to remount the same volume that we used before because this time around it won't create a random name for that volume. So let's try that. And again, I've forgotten the dash D. Urgh. I suppose it's useful to see this log so we, we know roughly when the container is actually up and running. So I think that's in a good state. If I do a control C now and to complete the demo, I'll repeat the LS. So my ID now begins 696. So I'll recall the exec command 696. We're in the container. I can run MySQL dash P password. And we use the Fleetman database. And now for the big reveal, if we do a show tables, we now have an answer to our question. Yes, that table did persist. So that's how volumes work. And I hope you can see that that is really an, an essential concept if you're going to use Docker to containerize things such as databases or really any kind of persistent store. So it could be a Redis container or whatever.